Hello friends, this video on comparing quantities part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we have got a fair idea about simple and compound interest. So let us try a few questions. Question number one, Fabina borrows rupees 12,500 at 12% per annum for three years at simple interest. And Radha borrows the same amount for the same time period at 10% per annum compounded annually. Who pays more interest and by how much? So th there are two people here. The first one is Fabina who has borrowed money using simple interest. So let's calculate the simple interest. So for Fabina, the principal is rupees 12,500. The rate of interest is 12% per annum and time period is three years. So how do we calculate simple interest? P into R into T by 100. That is equal to 12,500 into 12 into 3 divided by 100. So this is equal to rupees 4,500. So this is the interest that Fabina has to pay. Now let us try to calculate the interest that Radha has to pay. So in case of Radha, the principal amount is the same that is 12,500 and the rate of interest is 10% per annum compounded annually. That means the this interest rate will be applicable for one year. So the principal amount will change every year. And what is the time period? Time period is three years. So looking at the time period, how many conversion periods will be there? Because it is compounded annually, so yearly it will change. So you basically have three conversion periods. Right. So making use of that, let us try to find out the amount that we will get at the end of three years. So at the end of three years, we will get P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power N. So this would be equal to 12,500 into 1 plus 0 0.10 to the power 3. So this would be 12,500 into 1.10 to the power 3 so this is equal to 16637.50 so this would be the amount that we will get at the end of three years but we have to compare the interests right so how do we find out the compound interest in this case so the interest will be equal to this amount total amount that we are getting at the end at the initial principle that we had borrowed so this would be amount minus principal that is 16,637.50 minus 12,500. So this is equal to rupees 4137.50. So this would be the interest that Radha would have to pay. Now if you compare the interest that both of them have to pay in which case the interest is more. So Fabina pays more interest. Fabina pays more interest and by how much? So to find out that you need to find the difference 4500 minus 4137.50 which is equal to rupees 362.50. So Fabina pays more interest than Radha and by rupees 362.50. Question number two, Vasudevan invested rupees 60,000 at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded half yearly. What amount would he get after six months? Okay, so here the principal is rupees 60,000. The rate of interest is given as 12% per annum, that is 12% per year, that is the rate of interest which is given. But if the question says that it has been compounded half yearly, that means after every half year your principal will change. And what is the time period after which you have to find out the amount? So the time period after which we have to find it out is 6 months. So time period is six months. Now, since in this problem, we know that after every six months, the principal will change its value. So six months have how many conversion periods? So when we talk about the six months only, it has a conversion period. It has only one conversion period. So each conversion period is of six months duration. So now if we want to 
apply the compound interest formula that is the amount at the end of six months would be equal to the initial principal into 1 plus r by 100 to the power n so in this case the value of n would be 1 because there is only one conversion period but when you look at the rate of interest here the rate of interest is given per year but we want to know the rate of interest per six months so six months is basically half year right so the rate of interest per half year would be equal to 12 by 2 we will just half this value so that will become 6 percent per half year per half year or per six months whatever you call it so therefore in this case this would be 60,000 into 1 plus 6 by 100 to the power n which is 1 therefore this is 60,000 into 1 plus point 0 0.06 so this would be equal to 60,000 into 1.06 which is equal to rupees 63,600 so this would be the amount that he would get after six months now let us look at the second part of the problem So in the second part, we have to find out what amount would he get after one year. So that means the time period in this case has changed to one year. So one year will have how many conversion periods? Because here again, it has been compounded half yearly. So every half year, so each half year is one conversion period. So in one year, how many half years do you have? We have two half years. So one year will have two conversion periods. So with that, we can calculate the amount that we will get at the end of two conversion periods. So this will be equal to the principal into 1 plus r by 100 to the power n. So n is equal to 2 in this case. So this would be 60,000 into 1.06 into 1.06 which is equal to rupees 67,416. Question number three, find the amount which Ram will get on rupees 4096 if he gave it for 18 months at 12 and a half percent per annum interest being compounded half yearly. So in this case, what is the principal? Principal is rupees 4096. What is the rate of interest? It is 12 and a half percent per annum that is per year so 12 and a half is basically 12 to the 24 plus 1 that is 25 by 2 percent per year this is the rate of interest now we have to find out the amount after how many months after 18 months so the time period that is given is 18 months right so in 18 months how many conversion periods do we have so in this case it is compounded half yearly so every half year your principal would change so how many half years would be there in 18 months so six months is one half year so 12 months is two half years 18 months is three half years so basically there would be three conversion periods so for 18 months there are three conversion periods involved right now here one conversion period is basically a half year so the rate of interest should also be given in terms of half year because here it is given in terms of per year so this will be equal to 25 by 2 divided by 2 that is 25 by 4 percent per half year Right? So let us try to calculate the amount at the end of 18 months. So amount will be equal to the principal which is 4096 into 1 plus r by 100. r would be 25 by 4 divided by 100 to the power n. n is the number of conversion periods which is 3. So this would be 4096 into 1 plus one by 16 to the power three this would be equal to 4096 into 1.0625 to the power three this is equal to rupees 4913 so this would be the amount that he would receive after 18 months 
So I think the main catch with regards to compound interest is that you have to look at the time period after which you want to find the uh, amount and for that time period how many conversion periods do you have. Now make sure that each conversion period, if each conversion period is of 6 months then your rate of interest should also be given in terms of per half year. If each conversion period is for 3 months then your rate of interest should also be given as a percentage per 3 months. If your rate of, um, if your conver each conversion period is in terms of hours, then the rate should also be given in terms of per hour. So that is the most important catch in compound interest. So I hope that you would have found this lesson helpful. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.